Well, good evening, church. I uh, just uh, thank the Lord for another opportunity to be with you. Uh, hope and pray that you've had a good day today. I know it's been kind of dreary, kind of rainy and uh, a little chilly, but uh, you know this is a day that the Lord has made, and we should be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, just want to you know, thank God for allowing us life again, uh, just allowing us the opportunity to, you know, together in his house this morning, those that were able to, and those of you that were on live stream, uh, and uh, just so glad that uh, that you've uh, been able to be here with us, and yeah, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the time when we will be able to be together again at the church. Uh, don't know uh, exactly how that's going to be looking forward, but just uh, again, as I've said several times, I'm so thankful for the technology, for the ability to be able to, to stay connected, to be able to share uh, what God has laid on my heart with you. And and tonight we're going to be studying in, uh, still in the book of Nehemiah and, uh, you know, a very timely book for us as we started it uh, a few weeks before all of this came about and uh, as we were uh, studying this and, and working through this i began to think you know what uh, you know god god knew what was going on god knew what we had need of and he knew uh, that we would need the encouragement that comes from this book and tonight we're going to be in the sixth chapter the 10th through the 19th verse and uh, uh, so I hope that you have your Bibles, and uh, if you do, go ahead and, and get them, get turned there. Uh, we're going to have to go to the Lord in prayer here in just a moment. I've got a lot of people to pray for, and uh, as I said this morning, uh, we need to pray for one another. Please lift up your church family, lift up your neighbors, your natural family, uh, our nation. Uh, just pray for the leaders of our community, the leaders of our government, uh, pr ask you to pray for uh, those of us in the church that are trying to make the decisions and and to when to move forward, how it's going to look, and and what the things that we're going to be needing to be doing. But uh, more than anything, we need to to be in God's word because if we have the wisdom and the understanding that only come from God's word, uh, then that's uh, God will direct us the way that we should be going. He will teach us the things that we need to know. And so we're going to pray and then going to get right on into uh, the word. And, uh, and one thing that, uh, uh, you know, sometimes you may see me smile when I see people's faces and, uh, and their comments pop up on the screen coming through, uh, here, you know, it's good to just know you all are out there, uh, and, uh, that you're listening and, and I hope that you're praying and I know that you're praying because I can feel your presence in, in God's power during this time. So it is just so good to to have all of you all uh, with us tonight. So let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you and praise you for who that you are, Father. Lord, as, uh, Lord, as I see the, the names and, and the faces of, of our church members and God, if your children pop up on the screen and God, I see some I know that... Uh, God, are not able to be out and be in church, Father, whether it's with us or uh, or the church they're a part of or wherever, God, that by health reasons and, and uh, they're not able to be out. And Lord, I just praise you for, God, that you gave the wisdom for this technology so that we could be together. God, that the word could go out. Lord, for I know it's your desire that your word goes out. Father, and I pray that whatever that we would say, Whatever that would be done, God, would be your words and not mine. For, Father, I know that if it's from me, Lord, I'll mess it up. Uh, God, but if it's from you, God, it will accomplish that which it was intended. God, I pray for understanding, for wisdom. God, I pray for guidance uh, for each and every one of us. Lord, I pray as in this coming week that you would give me, the, uh, the leaders of our churches, God, the leaders of our communities and our nation, Lord, the wisdom and guidance from you to know what we need to do in this time. Lord, I know that there's people that are concerned, people that are frightened, but Lord, we want to trust you. The Lord, just going to lay it down at your feet and know that you're able to take care of all things. Father, we love you. We praise you. And all this we'd ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, we're going to begin reading in uh, 
sixth chapter of Deuteronomy, or of Nehemiah, excuse me, sixth chapter of Nehemiah, uh, the tenth verse down through the nineteenth verse, I think, is is uh, about how far hopefully we'll get tonight. And uh, you know, as we've been reading through Nehemiah, uh, we've been seeing week after week and and uh, study after study that the enemies are not giving up. Uh, the enemy is not. Uh, just because Nehemiah is making progress on the wall, just because that it seems like the Jewish people have come together, uh, the enemy has not given up. And we need to understand that today, that our enemy is not going to give up, but we also need to rest in the comfort that our God is greater. Uh, God is able to overcome all these things. God is able to lead us and direct us through all this stuff. God is able to... to uh, defeat the enemy you know well, that's one thing that as a child of god and and i've heard no you've heard the saying that uh, i've read the end of the book we win uh we realize that when christ came victorious out of the grave that he held the keys uh and no one's been able to wrestle him away from him he is still holding the keys and he is the one that's going to rule and judge this world and you know that's who we trust in that's who we have our faith in and know that he is the one that holds these keys so we're going to read the 10th through the 19th verse 6th chapter of Nehemiah it says now when I went into the house of Shemaiah the son of Deliah son of Mehadabel who was confined to his home he said let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. They are coming to kill you by night. But I said, should such a man as I run away, and what man such as I could go into the temple and live, I will not go in. And I understood and saw that God had not sent him, but he had pronounced the prophecy against me, because Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. For this purpose he was hired, that I should be afraid and act in this way in sin, and so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember Tobiah and Sambalot, O oh my God, according to these things that they did, and also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month Elu in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem. For they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to, Bi to Tobiah, and Tobiah's letters came to them. For many in Judah were bound by oath to him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Arah, and his son Jehoahana had taken the daughter of Mesulamah, the son of Berechiah, as his wife. Also, they spoke of his good deeds in my presence and reported my words to him, and Tobiah sent letters to make me afraid. Now, well, that's a... Uh, a mouthful of, of names there of people there but uh, as I was reading this and I was thinking about what was going on in this time and it says when I went into the house of Shemaiah and he was uh, reported to be a, a prophet to be a uh, some sort of religious leader in that day and it doesn't say why that Nehemiah went to this guy's house. It doesn't say why that he met with him. Don't know if it was an invitation. Uh, for if you read down a little bit farther, you would kind of suppose that it was an invitation because we know that he was up to no good. But uh, it says that when he went into the house of this man, and and he says that this guy was confined to his home and. There again, doesn't say why he was confined to his home. Doesn't know if there was an illness. Uh, doesn't know if there was some sort of, uh, if he was afraid, if he was frightened, if there was something going on in his life that he was confined to the home. But uh, it said that when Nehemiah went to this house, to this man who was confined to his home, and the, the, what, the, what Nehemiah said, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple 
Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. They are coming to kill you by night. Now, uh, one of the things that he said was true was the fact that they did desire to kill him. Uh, they wanted to come and kill him. They wanted to. They tried to lure Nehemiah out uh, out of the city to meet with them. They tried to get him into confined areas. They tried to get him into locations where they could kill him, where they could compromise him, uh, where they could do so many different things that they could. Uh, but Nehemiah, because he understood God, because he listened to God, he recognized this for what it was, that it was a lie. Because if you read this and you understand what he was saying, uh, he said, let us meet together in the house of God. Well, Nehemiah understood that only the priests and only during certain times for certain situations uh, were the priests allowed to go into where Shehemiah was in trying to entice Nehemiah to go. He was telling him, he said, you know, let's go in here. In church, we, we understand that, you know, God's Word uh, and God's Spirit, they never uh, contradict each other. If somebody tells you, you know, I feel this or I believe that, and it's contrary to what the Word of God says, then if we know the Word of God, we'll understand that it's a lie. They've been deceived or they're trying to deceive. And Nehemiah understood that Shehemiah was trying to deceive him because he was asking him to do something that was in direct contradiction to the Word of God. And uh, he told him, he says, come into this place. And he said, uh, and Nehemiah answered him, and he says, and what man such as I could go into the temple and live? Now, we understand how important and how much Nehemiah did understand this because he realized that all throughout history, when people that weren't supposed to go into the temple went in, they died. Uh, even with uh, if the priest went in in an unworthy status, when the high priest went in to offer into the holiest of holies to offer sacrifice, they would tie a rope around them in case they with bells on them. And if the bells quit tinkling for a period of time, if the priest was not moving, they'd realize that God had struck him dead. And but they couldn't go in for a rescue mission. The reapers and they had the rope tied to him was to drag him out. Nehemiah understood these things. He understood uh, what was, uh, how sacred this place was that Shehemiah was trying to get him to go do, uh, to go into. And, but Nehemiah also knew that the Shehemiah was telling the truth in the fact that they desired to kill him. But Nehemiah said, you know, should I go into the temple? Could I go into the temple and live? And he says, I will not go in. Church, sometimes we have to be that person that says, I'm not going to do this because it's contrary to the Word of God. I'm not going to go this place because it's contrary to what God's Word says. I'm not going to follow this person because it's contrary to what the Word of God says. That's what Nehemiah was saying. He said, I'm not going. I will not go in. And he goes down in the 12th verse and says, And I understood and saw that God had not sent him, but he had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. He was a, a hireling prophet. He was a prophet that was in it for the money. He was in it for his own personal benefit. He would say what uh, people desired. He would say what people wanted, and he was doing it to please men. And Nehemiah says, and I understood and saw that God had not sent him. I recognized the difference between a man of God and a man of Satan. And he says then that he was been hired by these two. He says, for this purpose he was hired, that I should be afraid and act in this way in sin, and so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. You know, Nehemiah was saying, even if I did part of this, even if I got afraid and I ran, or if I hid out at his warning, uh, instead, I would have a bad name. I would have a name that I was not trusting God, 
that I was not believing what he was telling me, that I was walking away from my responsibilities. And, and But I believe that Nehemiah truly thought that if he went into the temple and tried to hide in there, he was going to die. And so he said, uh, I wouldn't do this. And he knew that if he went in there and died doing this thing, not only would he not be there to lead, but his name would be tarnished. And the, those that were there working and those that were there trying to build the wall and complete the thing, if their leader's name was tarnished, if it was uh, shown that he was untrue, that he was not truly doing what he was supposed to be doing, uh, they'd lose heart. Uh, because it was only because they trusted Nehemiah and they believed that he was leading them down the path that God was directing, that they were doing what they were doing. And if his name had been tarnished, if his, you know, I was just thinking when the Peter and John were put into prison and put, put into jail and they were told to, to not speak of Jesus anymore, to not preach of him anymore. And they brought him before the council and uh, Gamaliel spoke up and Gamaliel began to speak about, he said, you remember all of these others that have come in the name and, and claim to be the Messiah and claim to be uh, the sent one. And they died and their followers all scattered. Said, and so let's just leave these followers of Jesus along because if he was not the Messiah, they'll scatter. And if he was the Messiah, then we would be found fighting against God. Uh, church, we need to understand that um, people need to trust and believe and have confidence in the children of God. And I know sometimes that we say, well, that's a lot of responsibility. But as long as we're walking in the path that God is leading us in, you know, in reality, the responsibility is falling on God. The responsibility is, is there that he is directing the path that we should go. And uh, we know that Nehemiah thought, knew that if he did not continue in the path he should go, that the wall would never be completed. And then Nehemiah did something that he always did. Something that I've said several times since, since we've been studying this, that we need to make a habit of our, ourselves. He talked to God about these things. In the 14th verse, this is Nehemiah speaking to God. It says, Remember Tobiah and Sambalat, O my God, according to these things that they did, and also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. Nehemiah tr knew who to turn to. And, uh, you know, you would think that after all the taunts, after all these different ones had come and and if you'll read, you know, these were Jewish people that the enemy was using trying to stop Nehemiah. Uh, Shemaiah was a Jewish religious leader. They were trying to do it. They were trying to stop him. But instead of Nehemiah saying, I'm going to gather up my army, I'm going to gather up my brothers, I'm going to take vengeance on this guy, I'm going to, you know, fight against the enemy, uh, what did he do? He went to the Lord and says, Oh my God, according to these things that they did. He said, Remember them, Oh my God, according to the, th these things that they did. And also the prophetess Noah died and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. He is saying, God, you deal with them. God, you deal with them. God, you're the one that will bring them to judgment. God, you're the one that will take care of these issues and we need to understand that it's not us that uh, fights the battles um, you know it's uh, I was reading something recently there where uh, it was said by a preacher he said you know that God had not called us to win arguments but to win souls and you know God has not called us to fight physical battles to go out here and, and and do all these great things. God has called us to fight these spiritual battles, to pray to Him, to worship Him, to lift up His name before this lost and dying world. And if you read over in the 12th chapter of uh, the book of Romans, 
uh, the 19th verse, I think it says, uh, it says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. You know, this happened, this, Paul wrote this over 3,000 years after Nehemiah was saying pretty much the same thing in here, saying, God, you remember. God, you take care of them. You do this, God. And church all down through history, God has said, I'll fight your battles for you. I'll do these things. The children of Israel, when they were coming out of captivity, he sent uh, wasps and hornets ahead of them to drive out enemies. He sent, uh, he fought battles that they couldn't fight on their own. Uh, when he had Gideon and Gideon in it, just a small band, uh, it was, you know, the sword of the Lord and Gideon. It was not just Gideon. The enemy was afraid because they knew it was God fighting the battles for Gideon. And we go down to, and, and Nehemiah was doing the same thing. And it says, And so the wall was finished on the 25th day of the month Elu in 52 days. And when all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem, for they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. And, you know, as I was reading this, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I was a little confused about the time frame because I thought, well, didn't I read back over here in the fifth chapter where Nehemiah talked about a 12-year span that stuff was happening? But when I went back and reread all of the, in, in the fifth chapter of, the, of Nehemiah and began to read up through this other, what Nehemiah was talking about there, he was talking about the, his, the generous heart and he said that never during a 12-year span that he was governor did he or any of his brethren take from the governor's allowance for his table. He was saying, and this is early, early on in his governorship. So, you know, this tells me that when Nehemiah finished the wall, the work was not finished. You know, I think sometimes that uh, that we look at things and think, you know, everything's finished. But Nehemiah had a long, long, long ministry or work ahead of him there in Jerusalem to help really kind of the building of the wall was just the first thing in setting things right and setting things in order for the children of God. And that 12-year period of time, Nehemiah was speaking in the from the presence to the future tense, saying, all oh, during this time that I was governor, I never eat of that table. You know, this was written after the fact of all of it. It's not like a, that. Uh, and I think that, and personally myself, you know, sometimes as you read through the Bible and a writer will kind of get things out of chronological order, uh, you know, I'm bad for that myself. Writing a story, telling a story, jump forward and go back, jump forward and go back. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's it's a little confusing. But when you read this, you'll understand that the Word of God is not when you read it in its entirety. And to me, that was just another uh, another thing to show me that even though you read through stuff and then you, then you stop back and start studying one section in depth, you don't need to forget about everything that's been behind or everything that's still ahead because that tells you the entirety of this story and helps you better place the chronology of things and, and what's going on. So, But it was in 52 days that this mighty work was done. And think about that. 52 days that this mighty work was done. And uh, these were not professional men. You know, if you think back about the first couple of uh, chapters as we were reading, you know, there were goldsmiths, there were silversmiths, there were priests in there, there were merchants in there, there were people of all different uh, 
groups and all different uh, uh, specialties that were building this wall. I, I remember where there was one man who had no son, so it was he and his daughters were building a section of wall. Doesn't say exactly what their careers were, but it made sure to mention that he and his daughters, so everybody with the, there, they were joining in building sections of walls near where they lived. And when the people of God begin to work in unison, what great things can be done. And I, it made me think about things that we as the, children, as the church and the children of God can accomplish if we work together, if we all take care of our area and work in our area and do the things that God has called us to do, uh, then and not be as concerned about whether this guy down the road is getting his work done or that one up the road is getting their work done. If we're all working together, that we can accomplish things that brings awe to the people of the world. Because what did it say? It says, and in 52 days this was done, and when all our enemies heard of it, and to me that was a great thing there, the enemies had heard they heard what God had done. It says, While well, all our enemies heard of it, all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem. You know, this puny little group of Jewish people that they had been making fun of, that they had made cower down for years and years, that every time that they had attempted to step up and work on the rebuilding of the wall and the rebuilding of the temple and the rebuilding of, of the things of God. They had been beaten down and they fell down. But what happened here when Nehemiah came in and the people understood that it was God doing this great work and they did it, said all the nations around us were afraid and fell greatly in their own esteem for they perceived that this work had been accomplished with the help of our God. All throughout the Old Testament, as we read, when people began to understand that it was God's people, that it was God working through his people, that it was God doing these great things, uh, they trembled. They feared. They knew that the power of the God of Israel. You know, they didn't feel the, fear the Israelites, but they feared Israelites' God. You know, uh, the, they knew the Israelites failed, and they failed, and they failed, and we do today. You know, we stumble and fall, but that doesn't diminish the power of God. And we need to let the world know that it is God that's accomplishing these great and mighty works. And then he says, Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah, and Tobiah's letters came to them. For many in Judea were bound by oath to him because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara, and his son Jehoahana had taken the daughter of Meshalom, the son of Berechiah, as his wife. Also, they spoke of his good deeds in my presence and reported my words to him, and Tobiah sent letters to make me afraid." Now, Tobiah was an Ammonite. Tobiah was uh, a person who was a sworn enemy of God, a sworn enemy of the Israelites. He was not a Jew, but he had married in. He had married into to a Jewish family. And if you remember back, for those that listened Wednesday night, remember back when, when we, we've been speaking over the last couple of Wednesday nights where he was saying not that when they go into the land which I've given you, you need to destroy them. I've passed judgment on them because if not, you'll start intermarrying with them. They'll entice you. They'll draw you away. And that's exactly what had been happening here. Uh, the Jewish men and women were giving their daughters to these uh, non-Jewish men as, as wives. They were getting daughters of these non-Jewish uh, groups for wives for their sons. They were intermarrying. They had become part of that region and part of those people. And in so being that they, in reality, 
uh, were putting more, I guess, uh, uh, they were had more allegiance to their physical blood relation than to their God. And if you read over in uh, the book of Matthew, I think it is the 10th chapter and the 37th verse, and this is a, uh, some scripture that, that seems kind of harsh and seems kind of hard, but what Christ is really saying is that you've got to love me first. And he told them there, he says, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. We see here that these Jewish people, they had more of an allegiance to Tobiah than they did to their God of Israel. And it said that they had they were passing letters back and forth. They were spies, if you would. They were giving information to Tobiah, which was giving it to Geshem and to uh, Sambalot. They, they were this information was going out to the enemies of God, to the enemies of Israel, and they were doing it because of their blood relations and because of their families. And then not only were do, they doing that, but then they were when they were in Nehemiah's presence, it says and they spoke of his good deeds. Uh, they tried to make him sound great and, and wonderful. And uh, make no mistake that there are ungodly people that do good things. But that doesn't change the fact of their ungodliness. You know, because it's not the good things that we do that determines whether or not we are a child of God. Uh, it's our relationship with Jesus and it's that relationship and whose family we're a part of. Tobiah was a part of the wrong family. Tobiah was doing some good things, but he was a part of the wrong family. And it says, And they spoke of his good deeds in my presence and reported my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to make me afraid. He sent threatening letters. He sent letters saying, I know what you're doing. I... I know where you're going, I know everything that's, uh, that's going on about you, trying to frighten him to make him think, well, they know what all's going on, so they're laying a trap for me, they'll, they'll be there to kill me, they're, they're going to subvert what I'm doing. But Nehemiah kept turning back to God. And as we go back up to the 14th verse, as he said, he says, Remember Tobiah and Sambalot, oh my God, according to these things that they did. Nehemiah kept going back and saying, God, I'm putting it in your hands. God, I'm trusting you. God, I'm believing you. In church, that's what we need to be doing in this time. We need to be trusting God. We need to be saying, God, you direct us where we should go, what we should do, what we should say. God, who we need to be with, who we need to uh, stay away from. And God, you direct these things. And Father, for we trust you. To, to truly fight our battles for us. And, you know, my prayer is, church, that we would be a people that uh, spent more time in prayer, that spent more time uh, asking God to direct our paths, that we spent more time in God's Word, that when the enemy was telling us a lie, we'd be able to see it as a lie. We'd be able to to pick it out as a lie and know that it wasn't of God. And if we'll do these things, you know, God will never fail us. You know, if we stumble along, it's because we're human. It's not because God's word has failed. It's not because God uh, doesn't hear and answer prayers. Sometimes we stumble along because God is saying, you're going down a path that's full of rocks and full of uh, pitfalls and, and everything. You're going down the path that I didn't lead you on. Or sometimes he's just saying, you're going down this path and you realize that the only way that you can make it is to hold to my hand. You know, this afternoon we were uh, out with uh, with our grandkids, uh, some of our grandkids, and we've got one that will soon be two years old. And oh, he thinks he's the biggest as anybody. And he'll try to walk in places and go places that uh, his little short legs are just not capable of doing hardly on their own. Uh, and... But he knows as long as I'm there with him or his dad's there with him that we'll 
get him by the hand and we'll get him through those things and he's willing to go anywhere as long as he knows that we're there and church we should be the very same way and realize that sometimes we're in places that our little short spiritual legs just won't carry us at those times we need to hold on even tighter to the hand of almighty god realizing that it's him and him alone that's going to see us through those places it's by his grace and his mercy that, that he's going to see us through in church it's by his grace and his mercy that he's going to see us as a nation through this us as a church through this time of separation and uh, give us the wisdom and understanding to know what to do and i ask you this week please be praying be praying for the churches be praying for the pastors on tuesday morning specifically at 9 30 uh, we're having a, a meeting of local pastors on the internet in order to try to uh, get the latest information and make informed decisions on how to move forward with the church uh, during this time and you know my prayer is is that we do exactly what God would have us to do you know I don't want to put any of you all in harm's way but I don't want to stay away from the church one day longer than we need to so I, I ask you pray that we would have the wisdom the knowledge have all the information that we need to make the decision that God would have us to make that it wouldn't be ours but it would be his and just pray for one another this week. Encourage one another. Uh, this past week, I've probably talked to more people that were just so depressed. More people that uh, that this isolation and, and this time of, of quarantine has really uh, been difficult on them. Church, it's during this time that we as the church, we as the children of mighty the Almighty God need to come together, love one another, pray for one another, uplift one another. So I ask you, join me as we pray tonight. Uh, pray for one another and pray for our nation. Father, as we come to the, the close of this time together, I just want to thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray uh, that you would just help us to, Lord, our, our spirits would be calmed, God, and they would. I realize the only way that mine can be is God that when I spend more time with you, God, there's more peace in my life. And Father, I pray that you would just help me not to be overwhelmed by the things going on in this world. God, not to be overwhelmed by all the decisions that, that need to be made. But realizing, Father, that truly, Lord, they, they need to be yours and not ours. God, just speak to us, Lord. Speak to us through your word. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit, Lord. Let your spirit lead us in the word where we should go, what we should be reading, what we should be hearing, and God, what thus saith the word of God. And Father, I know as I keep reading through your word that time after time, Jesus would say that they that hath an ear, let them hear what the spirit says unto the church. Father, that's my prayer, God, that our church, God, your church, your children would hear what your spirit through your word has to say to us. Father, we love you, praise you, thank you. God, want to give you the glory and honor for it all, for truly we know, Lord, that you and you alone deserve it. In all this we'd ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Church, I love you. Praise God for you. Uh, as we said this morning, as Travis announced, and I said later, uh, please be uh, watching the Facebook private page, the, watch your emails, your text messages, uh, be waiting on, you know, hopefully, you know, the deacons will be calling also. Uh, when we have the information that we need and we know exactly what we're going to be doing, we're going to get the information out to you as quickly as possible. But more than anything, Continue to do what God would have you to do. Be safe. Uh, take care of one another. Uh, and continue to love one another. Love you, church. Praise God for you. If you need us, call us. Message us. Uh, knowing that we'll be there for you in any possible way that we can. Love you. God bless you.